Welcome to Space Feedcast, episode 12M for Friday, what is it, May 27th, 2011. We are the Internet's Mr. and Mrs. Carrie Ann Higginbotham, and we will be your hosts for this evening. And if you don't understand that reference, it's because you weren't here for pre-show. Hey, speaking of uh, understanding that reference, you'll notice we've broken from our standard format of calling it four dot. You know, yeah. for, it's a season what number. Is our so a season show? number, you know, yes. that one, two, three, four, and right. then dot, and then the episode within that season. Right. So, um, uh, so and, the last and, one was 4.12. Yep, and then this episode is 12. SVC-12M. Uh-huh. And can, does anyone in studio know why we're calling it SVC-12M? No? No idea? Uh, I posed in the wiki uh, a question saying, if you can tell me why... Query. Query, why we have named this SVC-12M, I'll I'll give you a prize, and so uh, the real sus first person to email first me. person to email uh, was the real sus with the subject of you need to make your questions harder. Whatever. Uh, well, uh, I said why and what do the numbers mean? So the yes. reason why he didn't quite get right, but uh, I accepted his answer, which was a good answer. Um, I don't remember what it was, but it was a good answer. Twelve millionth show. The reason Not why, so much, Jeffrey. No. Originally, in the space shuttle program, it was STS one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then all of a sudden they stopped. And the next space shuttle mission is STS forty one dash, and then I guess it'd be A. I don't remember the exact yeah, I first. Think so. And the reason they did that is uh, the current NASA director didn't want to have STS thirteen. Right. It was a bad number. Apollo 13. 13 is an overshadowing number that you just don't want to have. Right, And right, so he right. changed it to be STS and then the ending year number, the uh -huh. current fiscal year, so four, mm -hmm. the launch facility that they're at, one, which is KSC, the primary launch facility, two would have been at Vandenberg Air Force Base. Okay. Uh, and Good then you know. the letter at the end is the slated launch for that show. So uh, 41A would be 1984, launch site one for KSC, first launch of the year, scheduled launch of the year. And so this show is, uh, because it would have been 413, can't have 13, so we renamed it to SVC 12M, which is uh, 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, this is our second studio, the, the primary studio is actually back in Eden Prairie. This is true. So this is our secondary true. studio. Okay. Uh, and show M, which would be the 13th show of the, <laughs> uh, of the year. <laughs> Huzzah! I was going to guess that. Huzzah! Yeah, <laughs> they're saying they were going to guess it. That's what it is, obviously. So uh, The Real Sus, congratulations, you have won a box of moon pies. And while I'm at it, you've also won a Roku. Congratulations. Oh, hey. so look, how, look how that just slides out of nowhere from underneath <laughs> the graphics. So there you go. You've got a Roku, so you'll be able to watch a Space Vig cast on your HDTV. And of course, we will throw the Moon Pies in there as well. Bam, Moon Pies. And I expect you to record a video of you timing yourself in a Moon Pie competition. So Tough. there you go. A little bit of shuttle trivia. Speaking of shuttle trivia, yes. uh, so Karen, you've got a day job, and they decided Sometimes. that. That yesterday, <laughs> uh, yesterday was uh, Sally Ride Day at your day job. Yes. And they because it was Sally Ride's it's Sally Ride's birthday mm -hmm. was uh, May twenty sixth. So they turned to you and they said, "Make me some." They said, "You're the space trivia. geek, right?" And I said, "Oh yeah, that would be me." <laughs> and they said, "Well, we we it's it's Sally Ride Day." And I said, "Oh, uh, great!" And they said, "We want to have a quiz about Sally Ride." So what are the few things <laughs> that you learned? You know, because awesome. yeah, much like NASA Edge, we've kind of got the insider and outsider, right? We've got the space <laughs> geek and the non space. Just so because I know some space things doesn't mean I know everything about every astronaut ever. So like, let me just whip out like ten facts what? about Sally Ride. Come on, Sally Ride, the first female astro uh, uh, American, American astronaut, astronaut in space. So uh, give me a couple factoids that you learned about Sally Ride that are couple that are kind of cool. Um, uh, so a couple of weird things that sort of stuck out to me. There are two elementary schools that are named after her, neither of which are from her home state. <laughs> I, I thought that that was kind of interesting. Uh, she is part of the uh, California Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Like they have a special person. Huzzah. Uh, yeah, and uh, in the women's and arts sciences mm -hmm. uh, section, okay. uh, which, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, what else? Oh, you know what? You want to know how she became an astronaut and what she was thinking she was going to do before she became an astronaut? Absolutely. She was a nationally ranked tennis player. I can see where this transitions to astronaut. Right, exactly, <laughs> right? She, uh, she got her doctorate in physics, but uh, she answered a newspaper ad. She was mm -hmm. one of like 8,000 applicants out of a newspaper ad to become an astronaut. An astronaut. Is that, but I mean, how ridiculous is that? And she if there was, was a, an ad anymore? You know what's interesting? So <gasps> she was in the uh, TFNGers, which is the, uh, the um, what's the safe version that I can say on air? It was the, <laughs> uh, the 
uh, ten first new guys, I think is what they, uh, they said. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the first group of shuttle astronauts to be brought in after the Apollo era. And there's actually a great book that Vax Headroom in the chat room turned me on to called Riding Rockets. And while it's not about Sally Ride herself, it does mention Sally Ride and a little bit about uh, her personality. It's just a, a really good read. So. Oh, uh, two other really quick things. She only wrote on Challenger, mm -hmm. on both of her missions, and she's the only person to have been on the uh, investigative crews for the Challenger disaster and the Columbia disaster. <laughs> Interesting Sally Ride factoy. So happy birthday, there you go. Sally Ride. All right, uh, speaking of uh, anniversaries and dates, we've actually got the 50th anniversary of Kennedy's uh, historic speech. We and must go to the moon speech. We must go to the moon. So you know what? We would not be a space show if we didn't give you a little bit of space geekery. Here you go. Here's just a small snip snippet of the 17-minute speech that he gave at, I believe it was at Rice University. Here you go. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. And so we, we actually aired a slightly longer snippet mm -hmm. of that speech than you're used to hearing, which is just the we choose to go to the moon Obviously. portion of it. Uh, but it's actually really good. So it, you just YouTube it, and you'll, you'll be able to find the we choose to go to the moon. And there it's are about, two slightly different variations of the speech. Correct. There was one that he gave in front of a special session of Congress. Right. Uh, and then there was that version, which he gave as a speech, uh, I believe that was at Rice University. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the more famous of the two. Uh, the first one didn't go over quite as well as the second one did. Right. Uh, and involved a few other things that he did not mention in the second speech. But uh, he created a legacy with that particular speech. And on um, USA Today, a few astronauts have called President Obama out mm -hmm. saying, uh, you know, you're not living up to the legacy set forth by JFK. Uh, and this is by Neil Armstrong, the first man to ever step foot on the moon, mm -hmm. uh, Jim Lovell and Gene Cernan. Gene Cernan, the last person to step foot on the moon. So all Apollo astronauts, all amazing people, mm -hmm. and all, I don't, it's actually really, it's something you should read. The, the link is right there in the, uh, in the, the bit.ly URL, mm -hmm. uh, JFK Legacy. And basically what they're saying is that the fact that the Obama administration canceled Constellation, not that the shuttle is gone, I think most people most educated people in the space program agree, not all, but most people agree yeah. the space shuttle needs to go away. It locks us into low Earth orbit. It is not a safe vehicle. Uh, it's 30 years old, and the, the proponents of the space shuttle say, well, yeah, it's designed to do 100 missions each. Yeah, but not for 30 years. Right. So space shuttle needs to go away. They're saying canceling Constellation was the wrong move. And I'm, there are some really great, great quotes out there tongue-tied. They're all great quotes They're out great there. quotes uh, talking about how this doesn't make sense, how what they wrote in USA Today um, is an old way of thinking. And um, I, I'd like to highlight a few of them. One is Constellation would have cost the country way too much money. It would have been Apollo all over again. Mm -hmm. And we can't relive Apollo. The political circumstances that were around po Apollo program at the time do not exist right now. It's a very different era. It's a very different time. NASA is, no, is not the same agency that we had during the Apollo era. Right. And Constellation would have essentially drained all the funding from NASA, mm -hmm. and it would have been the exact same thing. If we were ever able to actually finish building the rockets and fund them, mm -hmm. we would barely be able, we couldn't even afford to fly them. Yeah, that's scary. They're just scary. too expensive. It's, <sighs> it doesn't make sense. Additionally, it's not that NASA is sitting back and doing nothing. NASA, under the uh, tutelage of my, Dr. Mike Griffin, back when he was NASA administrator, they developed something called the COTS program. Mm -hmm. And this is a program that gives money to private space, companies like SpaceX. Mm -hmm. Consider this, 
for just the cost overruns of the Ares-1 program, mm -hmm. not the whole program, just the overruns of the Ares program, SpaceX has designed and flown the Falcon 1 uh, five times, they have designed and flown the Falcon 9 two times, and they have designed, uh, uh, they've also designed and flown the Dragon crew caps, uh, Dragon cargo capsule, and they have, and that flew once successfully, and they have designed the Falcon Heavy rocket. All of that for simply the cost overruns of the Ares-1 rocket, which, by the way, has never launched. That's The Ares-1X is not an Ares rocket. No. The Ares-1 is a paper rocket only. Think about that for a second. That is American innovation right there. That's taking the best of what NASA can give them, is funding these privatized companies and saying, you know what? Having one vehicle isn't good enough. We're going to spread it out. We're going to allow American privatized companies to innovate. And this is what we're all about. This is, this is commercialism. This is awesome stuff. And it's not just SpaceX. It's orbital technologies. It's Blue Origin. It's mass and space systems. There are tons of space companies that can do what people want NASA to do, which right. is to build vehicles to ferry to low Earth orbit. LEO's not hard anymore. We're very good at LEO. So, yeah, this is great. Someone should have a heavy lift vehicle, but Constellation's not it. And living in a 60s era mentality isn't it either. So just, these guys are great guys. They put their lives on the line for Apollo. Yes. But just because they did that doesn't mean that they are experts in the future of human spaceflight for this country. And... Um, there was somebody on Twitter that uh, said basically, you know, we don't consult airline pilots about airline economics, so why are we listening to old astronauts? About space policy. About space policy. I, I think it's a um, outdated point of view on Constellation. If you were to go back five years, maybe you can make that argument. But knowing what we know now, I'm a little surprised that they're making that argument. It just seems somewhat uneducated to me. Like, it, it, you just, you cannot repeat those things of the past. So uh, hit the link at the bottom of the screen. Read the comments. Uh, it is it, an interesting read. It is. It's, it's not a bad read. No, it's no, It's just no. that it doesn't make any sense. So, all right. Um, I lost my wiki. Oh, there we go. Oh, sorry. Speaking of Constellation being canceled. So yes. Constellation was, for those who don't know, because I'm trying to make the, the shows for non-space geeks too, and I keep forgetting that sometimes people have no idea what Constellation was. So we got rid of the space shuttle and we replaced it with something called the Constellation program, which consisted of two different rockets, an Ares-1 and an Ares-5, mm -hmm. a small rocket and a really big rocket. And then on top of the rockets, much like you had the Apollo capsule, there was going to be an Orion crew capsule. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there was, uh, for landing on the moon, the Altair lander, and a bunch of other things that went with it. But a Constellation was a program that encompassed a bunch of different things. So that program is canceled, but certain aspects of it do live on. And one of the things that lives on is the Orion crew capsule. Um, you're going to have to take it from here for a moment. Oh, okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, NASA announced Tuesday that des the design of the new deep space exploration capsule is based on the canceled Orion vehicle, uh, which they've been working on since about 2005, 2006, is my understanding, correct? Orion? Uh, they've been working on it since Constellation was announced. Well, okay. Right? Yeah, 2005. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the direction we're going in, uh, which kind of makes sense as well because we've spent so much money About on five billion, if I remember right. Right. Yep. So we it... spent five billion dollars on Orion thus far. Right. In the development of, of mm -hmm. this capsule and what have you. So it's it's even though Constellation as a as a program got scrapped, that doesn't mean that Orion correct got Orion scrapped. Orion is living on. And uh, in a couple different forms, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this is one of the forms. Um, it's going to be based on Orion. It's a deep space craft. And, and that's kind of one, that's some of the original mock ups of it. And the thing with Orion is, unlike the space shuttle, it can go to the moon. And if you want it to, you know, it'll be, it'll be a, uh, what is that, tin can? I mean, it'll be. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, like a tuna can. <laughs> but, yep. Very much harking back to the Apollo's days. Mm -hmm. It looks very much, very similar to that. Um, it's the same kind of concept, et cetera, et cetera. Well, as BZ Wing Zero in the chat room would often say, the physics haven't changed. And so right. the reason it looks like an Apollo capsule is because we figured this stuff out in the 60s. <laughs> the, the design just works. Right. Uh, you'll notice that the Dragon Crew capsule from SpaceX, much, also very, similar. very, very similar in design. Although I would like to point out, $5 billion for Orion is still five times more expensive than 
all of the money SpaceX has ever spent. <laughs> so, and they have the Dragon module, which they were working to build a crew. But again, this gives us options, right? There this, you this go. Is, this options. Is, no, this is a good thing. It Having is. options is a great thing. Variety is the spice of life. It, well, and consider this mm -hmm. when uh, ch we had the Challenger and Columbia disasters, after each disaster, we had to ground the entire fleet. Right. If the same thing happens with Orion or with one of the rockets that Orion is flying on, God forbid. Which we hope doesn't happen, but if it does happen, we'll have other alternate options we can go to that won't be grounded as we try to figure out what happened right. with that other vehicle. So it will keep the American space program constantly running. I was just going to say, without having to rely on other countries. Exactly. You know, actually, I want to touch on that. Notice, ever notice this? This isn't scripted at all, but I just realized I said this. The American space program. Right. Singular. Right. That's fundamentally our problem. Yes. It's, it's, it's not... It's it just, is. It's, we've got we have one group program. that's have, doing one thing, and that's the only thing that they're doing. We have the and they're the shuttle. only ones who are doing Kinda. it. Kind of. We have the space shuttle. That's our human space flight program. Yes. That's it. That's a problem. So we should be looking at it uh, plural. It should be multiple programs. It should be multiple vehicles. It should be multiple ways to put humans into space. That's how we should do it. And I, I'm not, I, I, keep, I realize I keep bringing up SpaceX, and the reason I do that is because they're the closest ones to being able to do this today. Right. Um, I, I, I mean, they'll be able to do this by 2013, 2015, easy, with humans, I think. Um, but, you know, it doesn't have to be them. It could be anyone. John M. John M. Knight in the chat room says that we need an industry. Yes, a we need it. And I've said that on the show not before. Not one single space program. It's an automobile industry, right? right you've got a bunch right. of different car manufacturers. Maybe that was a bad example for the show. But you've got a bunch a of different bit, car manufacturers. Right. And when one car has issues, you don't shut down all the cars on the road. Right. You pull that one car and recall just that one car. We need a space industry. Right. So when we have a problem with a single rocket, we don't shut down the whole space industry. We pull that one rocket off the line and say, da, da, da. We, we recall that rocket and figure out what we can do. This is really capitalism at its best. I mean, this is what America is based on. And uh, going back to the original story, I just, I don't understand why they would want that. I, it, having a single entity running a single vehicle that does a singular thing, it just, it doesn't make, that you can't afford doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, that you can't God. afford, I think, is the one thing that people will, can really gravitate towards. <laughs> but one thing, it, while Dragon can kind of go to the moon, yes. I, I don't know how much of a deep space vehicle it is. Right. Um, I, I would actually, I, I mean, I just don't know. Maybe it is a deep space vehicle. <clears throat> but I, I would, I, actually, I, SpaceX, I'd love for you to come on the show and talk about Dragon. <laughs> uh, but Orion <laughs> is designed to be a deep space vehicle, and actually we have it's got a... It's a multi-purpose crew vehicle, yes? Yes. Is Orion, mm -hmm. MPCV, mm -hmm. which is very catchy. It is I, very catchy. Yeah, MPCV. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So that lives on, and they're continuing work. And actually, if you watched our STS-134 launch coverage, mm -hmm. we brought on, um, this is the Lockheed Martin, Orion. Yes. We brought on Lockheed Martin, and they talked about it. And they, they went into some detail as to w what it's all about. It's that actually was really, really cool. That it, was really interesting. Well, you know, we'll post I a snippet of that up on, on the website. And Epic subscribers, you can download the whole thing. I had fun with that one. Um, what's my next... Story. Um, so then we're going on to. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do this right before we go into break. This is a fun one. This is talk about uh, controversial. The whole top half of the show is, is a little know, bit. You know, it is. It is a little bit. So, and chat room, you're going to. I'm just going to move the chat room so, closer to me here. One more Apollo astronaut who, admittedly, again, sort of more space geek, sort of less space geek. I saw this name and said. You're wearing a space shirt. I am. And I said, who? Who's this? What guy? This guy was an Apollo astronaut? <laughs> that they were like, yeah, he was the last guy to step foot on the moon, or the last guy to leave the moon. And I yeah, was like... Yeah, I know. That's a fun little debate. Who was the last man on the moon? Is, the, is it the last one to step foot on the moon, or is it the last one who stepped foot off the moon? Yeah, this, he mm -hmm. is very specifically... And that was my, so because especially with these two articles back to back, it was like, mm -hmm. last guy to be on the moon. And I was like, wait, I thought the other guy was the last guy to be, oh, last guy to step foot onto the moon, last guy to leave a foot on the moon. Okay, understand. So in any case, uh, I'm sure some of you already know who I'm talking about, but his name is Harrison Schmidt. And very honestly, honestly, I had no idea who this man was, no clue he was an Apollo astronaut. So I was like, why are we listening to this schmo? But in any case, uh, he... Uh, Let me just sum it up. He yes. wants to get rid of NASA completely. Completely. He wants to scrap NASA completely and start an all-new agency. I'm not necessarily against that idea. This article that we've linked to 
isn't very clear on all of the different points, though, because we have talked about this. Yes. We've talked about, you know, making NASA kind of the FAA of the space Mm -hmm. program, uh, you know, or, or at least part of NASA, because what NASA's doing with, uh, you know, the manned space part of NASA, because what NASA's doing uh, with mm -hmm. uh, the planetary sciences is, is amazing and wonderful, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think that they're doing such a great job, I wouldn't even want to touch that, if that makes any sense. Well, you do have programs like JWST, James Webb Space Telescope, which is okay. woefully over budget. Okay, w fine. But I don't want to completely shut down every last thing that NASA is doing and only make them the yeah. FAA of space because that just seems a little too harsh. Yeah. Right. I, I think. Yeah. I mean, and that's the, that's the thing that sometimes people forget is NASA is more than just human spaceflight. They have their hands in a little bit of everything. Um, so, but at the same time, this legacy infrastructure that we can't seem to get around. Yes. Cong Congress building rockets because NASA doesn't build rockets anymore. Congress builds them, right? And then NASA figures out how to how to jimmy rig it into their Which specs. Which is kind of what Schmidt is saying. Um, he's asking for an overhaul of the space program, uh, partly in response to Obama's budget, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the best part is here, it says he wants to, you know, shut everything down, reform, and come back new as NESA. In, NESA. In, in 2013. Um, but I, I don't think I ever got what NESA was supposed to Here's the problem, though. For. NASA has a great brand. It and does. I know this sounds terrible and stupid, but it, it does matter. NASA is an inspirational and iconic logo and name to humans worldwide. And just shutting that down for the sake of shutting that down and giving it a new, it's not for the sake of, but shutting that down, uh, people are gonna, that, that's just not a reasonable it's not gonna fly. thing. It's not gonna, ha it just won't happen. Sorry, it's just uh, not gonna. <laughs> but you can still reformulate under the existing system. Yeah. You know, what needs to happen really is Congress needs to stop building rockets and, and you know, forcing them to use certain technologies right. that are maybe good for the rocket, maybe not. Well, it con Congress should let NASA build the rockets and say, here's your budget, here's your destination, go. Because um, Congress, you're not rocket scientists. Stop it. Uh, and then NASA does kind of need to, uh, they're... Well, the best part is that, so the hard. funding, the, the funding would have to be increased by a cost of two billion to three billion more than what NASA's currently costing happen. taxpayers. And Schmidt totally believes that taxpayers are completely gonna be willing to foot the bill. No way. Look, I live in Minnesota, all right? The Vikings have a stadium. All right, they have the Metrodome, but we can't use it right now because the dome, part of the Metrodome, no worky worky. You may have seen some of the news on that. Right? Yeah. We cannot convince any part of the state to rebuild or to build a new stadium. We can't. This is, the, this is our football team. It's our state football team. For some people, it is our pride and joy, and we can't even get a new stadium built. Oh, we even, can't agree. Even outside of that, we're in Minnesota. We're not a space state, so people here don't care about space. And I think sometimes the people who live on the coast, specifically those on the space coast, they're kind of surrounded by other people who are space geeks. I never knew and the space coast existed until I went to go visit the space coast. That's not what the rest of the country thinks. Y'all. Uh, realistically. So anyhow, um, interesting concept. I think the execution's wrong. There you go. Uh, this is what I propose instead. It's the uh, Bencredible Space Empire. I think <laughs> you need, you busy. Need to, yeah. I believe uh, this is what I believe we should build. Um, this will solve all of our problems. I will run the Space Empire. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, for for those who are sci-fi fans, I hope you enjoy the uh, the uh, the reference there. Mm -hmm. And um, that's that's how we solve all of our space programs. Is the Bencredible Space Empire. On that note, <laughs> we're going to take a break, and when we come back. Uh, more space geekery. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Okay, everybody. Here are some brand new space pics from the ISS. Thanks, Astro Explorer. These photos are really great. Can you share more? Of course. You know, Amanda J, these images in many ways connect us all. They connect us by the technology developed to explore space also keeping us closer and safer on Earth. We now have satellites and sensors to alert us to danger and aid disaster relief efforts. Space technology helps us track and fight fires to protect life. 
I heard something about eye surgery. You're right. Better eyesight to improve life. And medical breakthroughs to extend life. I get the picture. Space exploration makes things better on Earth. I'm on board. Think outside the circle. Uh, so in the break, Flying Jenny said uh, he, that I got the first two letters, right, of the, uh, the incredible space empire. Thanks for that. And then uh, they want me to, and I think this is great, they want me to get a go, like a goatee. So when we come back, it just like the, the Ben Credible space empire, I have, to, I have to have a goatee. Evil Ben? Evil Ben. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, some really cool things happened. So uh, really cool things happened in space. Uh, first oh. off, NASA has released some awesome footage uh, and I'm only going to show you a couple minutes of it, but Amazing. this is of the solid rocket boosters from STS-134. And I, I've cut this up into only two minutes, but you're going to want to check out the full YouTube video. Here you go, check this out. This SRB videos from STS-134. Zero and lift off for the final launch of Endeavor. Expanding our knowledge, expanding our lives in space. Houston Endeavor, roll program. Roger roll, Endeavor. Houston is now controlling. Endeavor beginning to uh, pull over onto its uh, back. The roll program underway as uh, Endeavor begins the heads down position on course for a 51.6 degree, 136 by 36 statute mile orbit. Zero and lift off for the final launch of Endeavor, expanding our knowledge, expanding our lives in space. Houston Endeavor, roll program. Roger roll, Endeavor. Houston is now controlling. Endeavor beginning to uh, pull over onto its uh, back. The roll program underway as uh, Endeavor begins the heads down position on course for a 51.6 degree. 136 by 36 statute mile orbit. As standing by for separation of the solid rocket boosters. As standing by for separation of the solid rocket boosters. I just think that's cool. <laughs> Is it so? Ooh, and you know yeah. when it hits the water because it just like stops for like that second and then. You know, and I, there's actually another <laughs> clip in that video. I probably should have chosen it as well. That has the sound, the oh. the, the king, 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 king noise <laughs> oh. as it's coming back. So for the the uh, non-space geeks Amazing. out there, the solid rocket boosters. When you're looking at the space, I have props. Ooh, props! Look at this. Watch this. Dan, 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 dan. Let's not break the Lego shuttle. Let's not break the Lego shuttle. These Yay. are the solid rocket boosters. The white and things. they're quite literally solid fuel. It's it's unlike the liquid fuel that runs in the giant orange external tank. Uh, this is a uh, solid fuel and once you ignite it, you cannot shut it up. It's it's Ooh. going. And uh, there's a mixture that they've uh, got in here and these are the different segments. You've got the uh, four segments inside of the uh, solid rocket motor 
and uh, there are two solid rocket motors, and you were watching the cameras that are attached to each one of those. So cool. And uh, someone in the chat room said, beautiful HD, actually, no. <laughs> I just, mm -hmm. I, I run filters over it to make it look prettier, but no, those are standard F cameras only, actually. And uh, they do look stunning. They're not normal shots that you get off of NASA TV. And it's so, well, I, I think part of it is that it's so clear up there that you're not dealing with a lot of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's a, even though it's SD, it's, it's very, and so the shuttle launches, it's got the whole stack, and then what ends up happening is uh, one at a time, if I pull the orbiter off, uh, these will actually fire away from the external tank like so, and then these fall back down to Earth like you saw, a parachute deploys, and we, and have we a little recover video on these, that. That's what you just and thought. each segment is reused in different launches. Mm -hmm. And so what was interesting is, um, man, I think it's STS-135 that actually has a segment from STS-1 in it. Oh. I believe it, it was either oh. STS-134 or 135, but I'm pretty sure the final space shuttle mission, just by happenstance, happens to have a really? segment that was flown on the very first space shuttle mission. Happenstance. How cool was that? Yeah, I thought that was pretty neat. It's pretty neat. So, uh, and as an added bonus, I just took apart the LEGO shuttle without having it crumble in my hands, which is not something that normally happens. No, normally we have... <laughs> Speaking of other really awesome things, like the Soyuz did a fly around of the International Space Station. Normally this is you something that the this? Space Shuttle does, uh, but they, uh, they had to take the expedition crew off and they wanted to get one final shot of what it looks like with the Space Shuttle and the Space Station. You can go ahead and roll this particular clip cap. This is a, this is a voiceover clip, I think. We're going to find out in a moment. Um, but yeah, you can actually see the this, the whole station structure with the shuttle attached as the Soyuz flies Which around. Which is about a, as big as a football field now? A, a right? Around, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, and then the with the shuttle. There we are. There you are. Yeah. So you can see space this is the flight. You can see the space shuttle at the on bottom the lower part of the screen. Right side of your picture. Uh, you may want Again, to this is the engineering the overlay <laughs> view. Over that the yeah, that's not going like to that's not going to work very well. Oh. Um, so, and there you can see there's the reverse shot. So there's the Soyuz capsule way back there. That's the Russian capsule. Um, and so there's the space station uh, sitting there in the very lower right-hand corner. That's the, that's the shuttle. And in a moment, I don't remember how far away, we're actually going to rotate the whole... Can you fast-forward the video for me a little bit? That's just... Uh, this is going to be kind of jerky, but there you go. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> Works better in fast motion, doesn't it? Yeah, there. And then it should flip around for us. It looked just like this. Okay, there's the, there's the capsule, shot. blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. And... It's just really pretty looking. My it understanding is. is that, there we go. Ooh. Okay, go ahead and play it at regular speed at this point. Yeah, check that out. Uh, so yeah. Now the, I, I believe they actually had a camera and they were taking high resolution pictures oh. um, out the window. I, I don't know that for sure though. Can the chat room verify that? Did, uh, did the expedition crew actually take photos? Okay, yeah. So Bruce and SD is saying yes, yes, they did take photos. So I don't, I haven't seen those photos yet. Hopefully, we'll be able to get our hands on them. That's all right. Trebles is freaking out that the Earth is round. <laughs> the Earth is round. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I just thought that was really pretty, really cool looking footage. Very, very I mean, cool. How often do you get to see that? Never. As soon as we get the really cool high resolution pictures, we'll um, we'll, uh, we'll show those. We'll show those. We'll bring those into the show. But until then. Here you go. There's the uh, the tracking system on the Soyuz giving you uh, shots of that. Um, I, I don't. I think we'll we'll skip the the moon water thing for sure. next week. But I do want to talk about Copenhagen suborbitals. Uh, this is a misfit rebel group of awesome amateur rocket. Well, I, they're like. I, they're, these That's are one way of putting it. No, they're awesome misfit <laughs> rebels, they right? Are, but you, you're just like ah, these goonies. Uh, well, <laughs> no, I mean, they, so Copenhagen Copenhagen suborbital. They are yes. not professional um, rocketeers. They're no. amateur rocket scientists, mm -hmm. and they are building a rocket. They have built a rocket, and they're towing it out. They, these guys aren't kidding around. They built their own submarine, mm -hmm. by the way, and it, it works. It's the world's largest privately built submarine, I believe. And uh, they towed their rocket out uh, for launch last time. And it didn't work because of a LOX problem, if I remember right. So they had so. to come back. Um, now they're going to try their launch again. And they're going to bring it back out to sea. And they're going to wait for their window to open. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm cheering them on because this is really cool stuff. Head on. Um, 
I'm pretty sure that brings you, <laughs> I don't remember where that link goes. I, I'm pretty sure that link brings you to the Copenhagen Suborbitals website. Yeah. Uh, on their website, you can actually check out the vehicle designs. Like, I don't mean like CAD-based drawings. Someone using a pen and paper drew out what they thought this stuff should look like. Right? I mean, that's... It's a little bit disturbing. But they're, th this <laughs> is real stuff. It's, stu it's it, well, yeah, but it almost, it, it looks like one of those things where like... Uh, they got the well, guy kind of in the thing. Like, right, but it, it's 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 kind of like, uh, you know how like Nike swoosh they say was written on a napkin? That's kind of <laughs> what that reminds me of, is a little bit of like, I, I had this idea, and uh, I, I know that we've been up for three days, but uh, I'm going to write this down. And this it, It's amazing. And Absolutely amazing. As Quantum G is saying in the chat room, he said he gave him 100 bucks for the 2011 budget. Um, it's uh, copenhagensuborbitals.com slash 2011 budget. If you go to the link on the screen, at the bottom of the screen, you'll, you should be able to get guided to their, yeah. their budget. Um, we're cheering them on. I think this is going to be awesome. I'm excited to see what they're able to do, and hopefully they'll be able to launch this time. Even if they can't, so what? They'll launch next time. They're going to keep going at it. They're, this, they, so they get it. They do I mean, this they... because they love to do it, because it's fun for them. And uh, it's just it's interesting and fun, and it just kind of goes to show that we're at a point in humanity where kind of anyone can build a rocket that can send humans to space. Mull that over for a moment. I'm going to let you uh, think about that as we... Uh, Oh, I do want to do, all right. That's fine. One last story. I know we're running a little bit long, but one last story. Uh, NASA has finally put an end to Spirit. Uh, this is the rover that was uh, sent to Mars. Save Spirit. Save Spirit. Spirit and Opportunity were sent over to Mars. Uh, Spirit got stuck in the sand. It was there for a 90-day mission, and it's on day like 1,000 or 2,000. Or, I mean, Something. it's woof. It's like years gone on for years. It was only supposed to be there for 90 days. And there's a really cute... Um, Really cute XKCD XKCD cartoon. So here, here you go. Here's slide one of the X, XKCD. Yeah, uh, we, we broke yeah. in the slide so you could read it. Really yeah, you well. had to break it into four parts. So here's yeah. slide one. Um, you know, 89 days to go. Woohoo! Woohoo! Get a 90 day mission. And here's slide two. Poor, poor spirit. Poor spirit. Poor, poor spirit. Maybe if I do. If I analyze that rock really well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's slide three. <laughs> Power dying, but a, a, a good, good rover, rover would, would keep, keep going. going. <laughs> a good rover like they wanted. I, I, I love it. It's so sad. <laughs> do I get to come home? Did I do a good job? Do I get to come home? Guys. Guys. <laughs> and uh, the saddest slide of all. Oh. Oh. <laughs> It's, it really is <laughs> sad. <laughs> oh. There you go. That was uh, XKCD. <laughs> I, I know, tear. All right. Hey, I want to thank everyone for watching, and I did want to highlight Space Vacast Epic. We've started releasing additional Epic content, so if you saw our uh, tour that we did of Space Launch Complex 40 at Kennedy Space Center, that's where SpaceX is flying their uh, Falcon 9 rockets from. Um, it was done by Jason Ryan, our roving KSC reporter. He got to walk, he actually got to go under the rocket, which was kind of cool. Um, but you couldn't tell what it was, but it was really kind of yeah, cool. He, <laughs> he walked you through, there are a bunch of really cool tidbits that you maybe didn't know about. Um, you know, how they optimize their workflow, some of the things that they do to save some that money. The baffling was the, amazing. The baffling, stuff like that. And that is available, the full video is available to Space Vidcast Epic subscribers. Uh, Space Vidcast Epic is a way that you can help Space Vidcast do cool stuff, like go down to Kennedy Space Center, cover launches for you, um, you know, do neat events like that, and basically stay on the air. So if you like what we're doing, if you think this is fun, uh, subscribe to Space Vidcast Epic. You've got two options. You've got a monthly, so it's a little bit less, you know, not all at one time. Uh, it's $10 a month, or you can do yearly $100 a year, and that drops your monthly cost down to $8.33. Not only do you get exclusive content, but you also get access uh, to uh, ad-free experience as well. So we rip all the Google ads off the site. There's no Google... Um, there's no Google pre-roll ad and there's no Google no pop-up ad on any of our videos. So nice. Now, you'll still see, like if we burn an ad into the video right over here, you're still going to see that. Uh, but you know, all the naggy type or ads. us talking about Epic. Mm -hmm. Yep, that all goes away. So um, we'd really appreciate any subscriptions type stuffy stuff you have towards Space Vacast Epic. You're going to see a lot more really great content coming out in Epic. We've got uh, Juno interviews. Yes. Uh, for the, the next Planetary Sciences, uh, it's going to Jupiter. So we've got a full, it's going to end up being like a 20 or 30 minute epic video. Uh, we have got, um, there's another big one. 
I don't remember what the other big one is, but the, all that will be available on Space Vacation Cast Epic in the coming week or so. Coming to an epic near you. Absolutely. For those of you watching live, stay tuned. Space Vacation Cast After Dark is up next, where we're going to break out a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, Space Vacation Cast surprise treat. Hey, wow, mm. that's Space Vacation Cast surprise. Yeah. This, yep. The Bencredible Space just Empire will stop there. <laughs> That's what we should and, be doing. And uh, 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 for you, those of you who have Epic, you can of course watch After Dark after the fact. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next week. <laughs> eh, well, I don't know what that kind of ending was. That was terrible. Just roll the credits. Just roll the credits. Why? Query. Query. Why we have named this SVC 12M? Uh, I'll I'll give you a prize. And so, uh, the real sus. First person to email. First me. person to email uh, was the real sus with the subject of you need to make your questions harder. Uh, well, uh, I said why and what do the numbers mean? So the yes. reason why he didn't quite get right, but uh, I accepted his answer, which was a good answer. Um, I don't remember what it was, but it was a good answer. 12 million show? The reason Not why, so much, Jeffrey, no. Originally in the Space Shuttle program, it was STS-1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then all of a sudden they stopped, and the next Space Shuttle mission is STS-41- and then I guess it would be A, I don't remember the exact yeah, first. So. And the reason they did that is uh, the current NASA director didn't want to have STS-13. Right. It was a bad number. Apollo 13. 13 is an overshadowing number that you just don't want to have. Right, and right. And so he changed it to be STS and then the ending year number, the uh -huh. current fiscal year, so four, mm -hmm. the launch facility that they're at, one, which is KSC, the primary launch facility, two would have been at Vandenberg Air Force Base. Okay. Uh, and Good then you know. the letter at the end is the slated launch for that show. So uh, 41A would be 1984 launch site one for KSC, first launch of the year, scheduled launch of the year. And so this show is uh, because it would have been 430, right? We've got the Space Geek <laughs> and the Nice Space. Just so because I know are... some space things doesn't mean I know everything about every astronaut ever. So like, let me just whip out like 10 facts what? about Sally Ride. Come on, Sally Ride, the first female astro uh, uh, American, American astronaut, astronaut in space. So uh, give me a couple factoids that you learned about Sally Ride that are, are kind of cool. Um, uh, so a couple of weird things that sort of stuck out to me. There are two elementary schools that are named after her neither of which are from her home state. <laughs> I thought that that was kind of interesting. Uh, she is part of the uh, California Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Like, they have a special person. Huzzah. Uh, yeah, and uh, in the women's and arts sciences mm -hmm. uh, section, okay. uh, which, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, what else? Oh, you know what? You want to know how she became an astronaut and what she was thinking she was going to do before she became an astronaut? Absolutely. She was a nationally ranked tennis player. I can see where this transitions to astronaut. Right, exactly, <laughs> right? She, uh, she got her doctorate in physics, but uh, she answered a newspaper ad. She was hmm. one of like 8,000 applicants out of a newspaper ad to become an astronaut. An astronaut. Is that, but I mean, how ridiculous is that? And she if there was, was the, an ad anymore? You know what's interesting? So <gasps> she was in the uh, TFNG years, which is the, uh, the, um, Welcome to Space Vidcast, episode 12M for Friday, what is it, May 27th, 2011. We are the Internet's Mr. and Mrs. Carrie Ann Higginbotham, and we will be your hosts for this evening. And if you don't understand that reference, it's because you weren't here for pre-show. Hey, speaking of uh, understanding that reference, you'll notice we've broken from our standard format of calling it four dot. You know, yeah, for, it's a season what number. Is our so a season number, you yes. know, that one, two, three, four, and right. then dot, and then the episode within that season. Right. So, um, 
Uh, so the last one was 4.12. Yep, and then this episode is 12. SVC 12M. Uh huh. And can, does anyone in studio know why we're calling it SVC 12M? No? Yeah, yeah. No idea? Uh, I posed in the wiki uh, a question saying, if you can tell me, teen can't have 13, so we renamed it to SVC 12M, which is uh, 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, this is our second studio. The, the primary studio is actually back in Eden Prairie. This is true. So this is our secondary true. studio. Okay. Uh, and show M, which would be the 13th show of the, uh, <laughs> of the year. Huzzah! <laughs> Huzzah! Gonna guess that. Huzzah! Yeah, <laughs> they're saying they were going to guess it. That's what it is, obviously. So, uh, The Real Sus, congratulations. You have won a box of moon pies. And while I'm at it, you've also won a Roku. Congratulations. Oh, hey. <laughs> look, how, look how that just slides out of nowhere from underneath <laughs> the graphics. So there you go. You've got a Roku, so you'll be able to watch a space vid cast on your HD TV and of course we will throw the moon pies in there as well. Bam! Moon pies and I expect you to record a video of you timing yourself in a moon pie competition. So Tough. there you go. A little bit of shuttle trivia. Speaking of shuttle trivia, yes. uh, so Carrie and you've got a day job and they decided Sometimes. That, that yesterday <laughs> uh, yesterday was a Sally Ride day at your day job. Yes. And they Because it was Sally Ride's it's Sally Ride's birthday mm -hmm. was uh, May twenty sixth. So they turned to you and they said, Make me some They said, You're the space trivia. geek, right? And I said, Oh yeah, that would be me. <laughs> and they said, Well we we it's it's Sally Ride Day. And I said, Oh uh, great. And they said, We wanna have a quiz about Sally Ride. So what are the few things <laughs> that, that you learned be because awesome. yeah, much like NASA Edge, we've kind of got the insider and outside. What's the safe version that I can say on air? It was the, uh, the uh, 10 first new guys, I think is what they, uh, <laughs> they said. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the first group of shuttle astronauts to be brought in after the Apollo era. And there's actually a great book that Vax Headroom in the chat room turned me on to called Riding Rockets. And while it's not about Sally Ride herself, it does mention Sally Ride and a little bit about uh, her personality. It's just a, a really good read. So. Oh, uh, two other really quick things. She only wrote on Challenger mm -hmm. on both of her missions, and she's the only person to have been on the uh, investigative cruise for the Challenger disaster and the Columbia disaster. <laughs> Interesting Sally Ride fact toy. So happy birthday, there you go. Sally Ride. All right, uh, speaking of uh, anniversaries and dates, we've actually got the 50th anniversary of Kennedy's uh, historic speech. We and must go to the moon speech. We must go to the moon. So you know what? We would not be a space show if we didn't give you a little bit of space geekery. Here you go. Here's just a small snip snippet of the 17-minute speech that he gave at, I believe it was at Rice University. Here you go. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago fly the Atlantic? Why does rice play?